We've reached a point in our service where we observe the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> the Lord's Supper is an ordinance ordained by the Lord Jesus Christ for his followers to remember his death and to keep in mind the price of our redemption. When, he, when we eat the bread, it reminds us of, the, of his body which, in which he bore our sins on the cross, in which he was punished for our sins. And when we uh, drink the cup, we remember the blood by which we were redeemed and by which God cleanses us as we walk in the light. Before receiving the elements, we're going to uh, spend a few minutes in Scripture. And if you do not have a Bible, please raise your hand and one will be placed in your hands. And if you don't own a Bible, you may keep this as a gift from us. And as you get your Bible, <clears throat> you may turn to the epistle to the Galatians, chapter 6. The Bible has many ways of describing the change that takes place in a person that's been redeemed through the blood of Christ. In the passage we're going to look at, it's in terms that the change is in terms of sowing and reaping. So we're going to look at verses 6 through 10 of chapter 6 of Galatians. Follow along as I read these verses. The one who is taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he also reaps. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So when, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who are of the household of faith. In verse 7, Paul introduces the principle of sowing and reaping. We what we sow determines what we reap. In fact, we reap exactly what we sow. When a farmer sows kernels of wheat, he reaps a harvest of wheat. When a gardener sows beans, he will reap a crop of beans. Verse 8 states two different kinds of sowing, with its, each with its distinctive kind of reaping. The first kind of sowing is sowing to the flesh. And flesh here means the human nature which is in opposition to God and also to his righteousness. The, the one sowing to the flesh is living for himself. He sows what is pleasing to the flesh. The one who sows to the flesh will from his own flesh reap corruption. And that word for corruption carries with it the idea of de decay and destruction. To reap corruption points to a very bleak and dismal future. It is, in fact, referring to the future judgment when those who have sown to the flesh will reap eternal destruction away from the presence of God. The second kind of sowing is to sow to the Spirit. This person is sowing what is pleasing to the Spirit of God. He will, from the Spirit, reap life eternal. This may sound as though the sole basis of our eternal destiny depends on what we do. But Paul has already established that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through the faith in Jesus Christ. In, in chapter 2, 16, he says that we are justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. But having said that, the sowing to the Spirit, which Paul writes of here in chapter 6, is not an option for a Christian. In fact, it's evidence that the man has been justified. And if one is not sowing to the Spirit, 
he is sowing to the flesh. In chapter 5, Paul listed several things connected with sowing to the flesh, things like immorality, sorcery, outburst of anger, factions, drunkenness. And he warned that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. The preventive against carrying out the deeds of the flesh is to walk by the Spirit. And as we walk by the Spirit, we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh, but rather the fruit of the Spirit will be born in our lives. Such things as love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, self-control. Verse 7 begins with an imperative. He says, we should not be deceived. Do not be deceived. We should not be deceived by the thought that it doesn't matter how we live. As though God will overlook my waywardness. Sowing to the flesh is a mockery of God, especially for the Christian. And God will not be mocked. We reap what we sow. Now, while the Christian is not one who makes a practice of sowing to the flesh, we still live in the flesh. We still live in a fallen body. And by, we, we must, by means of the Spirit, put to death the deeds of the flesh. We must purposely sow to the Spirit. This includes doing practical good to others, as ver, like in verse 10 says, so while we have opportunity... Let us do good to all people and especially to those who are of the household of faith. As we partake of the Lord's Supper, we're remembering the event which has rescued us from a life of sowing to the flesh and made it possible for us to sow to the Spirit. Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, suffered the penalty of our sins on the cross Nearly 2,000 years ago, he bore our sins. He re his blood redeemed us from slavery to sin so that we might be free to live unto God. When we come to, came to trust in him, he created a new nature within us and gave us the gift of his spirit who will live within us forever. God the Father has brought us into his family and through the, death and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what we remember as we partake of the Lord's Supper. And Christian, this is a time for us to examine ourselves. How are you walking? Time to confess and repent of sin. It is also a time for us to remember the great sacrifice by which we were redeemed. And we should be encouraged to not lose heart because we will reap in due time if we faint not, if we not, do not grow weary. If you're here today and have not fully trusted in Jesus Christ for your eternal life and forgiveness of sins, you should really not partake of the Lord's Supper because this is for God, Christ's followers. It's designed for those who have trusted Christ fully and have been redeemed. It's a, a, if sowing to the flesh is a defining characteristic of your life, this passage that we've looked at would indicate that you are not a Christian. Just pass the bread and the juice by as it comes to you. But please consider that God has given his son to die for sins so that the one who believes in Jesus Christ will not perish but have eternal life. Man, please serve us.